Something to talk about is something we do several times a week here at the Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center. And we are grateful for the sponsorship of uh, Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island. They offer day stay and respite programs as well as memory care. To learn more, call 360-689-4314. You can also schedule a tour that way. 360-689-4314. And I'd like to mention that we are on the ancestral homeland of the Coast Salish people, our neighbors of the Suquamish tribe. We are grateful for their hospitality and we mm. honor them, the people of the clear salt water. Today uh, is Tech Talk with uh, John Chen. And uh, John is going to talk today, I believe, about some of the various ways that uh, you can make connections between your devices and other devices. Uh, how to how to how to do more with the things you have, right, John? Yep, we try. Okay, and uh, and John is also very helpful one on one. If uh, if you're interested in getting a one on one meeting here at the center, or if you'd like to meet with Bainbridge Youth Services. They have a thing they call Silver Tech, where they come down after school some Mondays and uh, can meet one-on-one -on -one with you. Either case, call 206-842-1616 and ask about tech support. I know some of you have already done that. Mm -hmm. So thank you once again, John. I really appreciate these monthly meetings. <clears throat> well, thank you for having me. Okay. This month's topic, we're gonna to talk about connecting your device, which can be a phone, can be a tablet, can be a laptop or a desktop, all of those devices. <clears throat> and to something else, something that you may already have at home. And one thing I see very frequently is people walking around with one of these and start showing other people pictures of their trip. And so you have two or three people all huddled around a little phone and you sometimes will have one to turn sideways and just to share the pictures. And, or you're showing some picture on something bigger like a tablet or a laptop, and you have two, three, four people all huddled around a screen to see the laptop. So <clears throat> what we're gonna focus on, how to use the devices you already have, these newer devices, and connect them to the devices you may already have at home. Uh, most of us have a stereo at home, speakers, and a TV. And really those are the main uh, items that we're gonna send it to. All right, yes. Which nope. okay. <clears throat> but, um, in addition to looking at pictures or looking at movies, you can also use your device to read. You can read the newspapers, you can read magazines, you can read books, and many of those are free. And you just, you just have to go and be able to find them. Um, you can listen to music, and not from the music you already have, but music that's on the internet. And you can get many of those for free. You can also, well, I used to listen to radio. And these days, I barely turn the radio on. But I still listen to radio. And that is actually listening to the radio stations on my phone or on my laptop. So <clears throat> let's uh, talk about some of the options. Before we get into that, how do you get your device, which can be a phone, to connect to, let's say, your TV or your stereo? First thing, wires. 
<clears throat> and that is sort of the simplest way, but it's also the messiest way. Right. Simplest way because you have a wire and this one is specifically um, designed for the lightning connector. And here I have a phone. I connect it. And on this end, I have this big connector. That big connector is what gets connected to your TV. All right. Most new TV, most almost all flat screen TVs have a connector that looks like this. And how do you connect it? Wires. You will notice <clears throat> these are big connectors. Narrow on top, wide on the bottom, and these have a special name called HDMI. And I'll tell you what they are. <clears throat> so you take your phone, connect this big connector to this big slot. You have something like this. This end gets connected to your TV. And now you go to your TV, turn it on, and you say, usually TV can uh, receive signals from one, two, or three, or four little holes or connectors. And you just have to pick one. I'm sitting here at the uh, senior center office. In front of me is a big TV on the wall. I can take this connector, walk over to that wall, plug it in, and I can see whatever I have on the screen, on that big screen, without doing anything else. Okay, so the simplest way and the messiest way is a wire, but you have to have the wire reach from your device to that TV. Okay. <clears throat> what happened if you want to look at, uh, not look at, but listen to music? You can listen to music here, and I'll tell you how to get the music, but this is as far as uh, the logistics of actually getting the sound out, out of your, uh, your phone. You can listen to your phone, which is a little tiny little speaker, or you can use the wire. Again, you can use this wire, or you can go with the wireless. Oh, by the way, this connector is a, is a lightning connector. I have another one. This connector is a USB-C connector. And I know I'm throwing out some words here. Hang on. And stay with me because I'll show you pictures of them. <clears throat> and so if you have a computer that uses a USB-C connector, you'll see it's oblong. And at this end, you'll see that big connector again. So now you can connect this to a big TV. Okay. Now, let's say uh, if one of you have a projector of some kind, somebody gave you a projector, you want to be able to show whatever's on your Mac or your phone, shine it onto the wall. Depending on what device you are using, whether it's a Mac or a, a phone or an Android uh, phone, you most likely have some kind of connector on the bottom. And then you will use one of these. And by the way, these I got off of Amazon for maybe 15 or $20. And a cable, 
And this other end of the cable will go into your projector. And that is pretty much up, pretty much it. Now, I have to say that there is a slight difference depending on what kind of projector it is. Most of them will accept this connector. Okay. Let's say you want to listen to music. You don't want to watch TV or look at pictures. If you want to look at mu listen to music, all the phones these days can go in, go to internet and retrieve music. The sound comes out of the phone, but the sound can also get sent to something else. And that something else can be, let's say, Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a wireless signal. And I'll explain that. And you have a perfectly good stereo sitting against the wall that you have had for ages. You love the sound, but that stereo doesn't support Bluetooth and your phone sends music over Bluetooth. So how do you get this to connect to your stereo? Here it is. You want me to show this? Oh, yeah. So this is a little device. This one is, uh, I don't know who makes it, DCSS, but it's a Bluetooth speaker. So we use this. It has Tishan's name on it because we use it in the thrift shop. And mm. so this Bluetooth speaker, you can see it's blinking, is a way to play music out of your phone. And, John, you can describe how that works because you'll do a better job of it than I will. Mm. All right. <clears throat> this is a different model than what Reed has. And it is also a Bluetooth speaker. And I think I bought it for like 15 or 20 bucks. And you connect this phone to this Bluetooth speaker. And you go through a process called pairing, all right? And you, every one of these devices, when they, you buy it, it has a tiny little piece of instruction that says, how do you pair it to the phone? Essentially making the phone recognize that this is going to talk to this. And that's usually very simple. You, in, for in, this, in the case of this unit, you turn it on and then you tell the phone, look for a new Bluetooth device and I want to connect to it. And when you do, it will start playing. And over here, there are volume control, uh, on, off, uh, volume down, volume up. And there is a little symbol, which is for connecting. So sometimes this gets connected to my phone. Sometimes this connected to my wife's phone. So, okay. What would happen if you want to connect to your existing stereo? Again, here is a little unit for somewhere around I think 18 bucks and I bought it at the FedEx store over in Silverdale. It was just hanging on one of the racks. There's a little speak, speaker wire. I connect this into my stereo, meaning uh, let's say I grab one of the connectors for CD, CD player. I connect this into my stereo. This is a li tiny little Bluetooth receiver. So I can connect my phone to the Bluetooth speaker, Bluetooth speak the bl Bluetooth receiver, Bluetooth receiver sends a signal to through this connector into my stereo. So 
all I need is this little thing hanging on the back of my stereo connected and I can play any music from my phone, from my Mac, from my PC laptop to here, okay? And this thing is rechargeable. Uh, a full charge will last about 15, 20 hours. Okay. I threw out enough acronyms, so we're gonna take a look at Okay. <clears throat> and by the way, can everybody see my cursor, which is the little hand moving around? Yes. Okay, great. There are a whole slew of connectors. They're all different. And here we have a plug. Plug are the mail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is the part, it's a, think of it as what's at the end of your power plug. <laughs> um, you buy a lamp, at the end of it, there's a plug with a prongs. And that, from a from a uh, industry st point standpoint, it's called the mail connector. But we it's we call it the plug. <clears throat> and this is the part that sticks out. And <clears throat> the other end is the port, meaning when you plug a uh, put a plug into the wall, the thing that is at the wall is called the port. So we have a plug and a port. Here is a lightning. You will see that it's kind of hard to see from this diagram, but this part sticks out. And let's see, where's my lightning? So this is equivalent on my lightning connector. <clears throat> then there's something called USB-A. Now, this gets really confusing. When you hear the words USB, it is a way to connect a cable to a device. There, there is USB-A, USB-B, USB-C, and then there is a number like 2.0, 3.0, they are different. When you see USB type A, it is this connector. Okay, it's a square, not a square, but a sort of rectangle. And there is some kind of uh, blank piecing here. USB A and B describe the physical shape, right? meaning it's a rectangle. And then we have, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't have it with me, but Here is a plug. And you will notice that here is, these two connect together, all right? Now, you will see, so type A and type B, they are actual dimension, and the description of the physical connector. And if you have a cable that has this at one end and this at the other end, usually that 
is called a type B and it is connected to something like a printer quite often. Then you will see the same thing, except they're blue. Right? Blue means it's a high speed. So here is type A version two. And here is type A version three. The only difference is the color indicator. So when you see something that is blue, you know that that blue connector is a high speed connector. Okay, <clears throat> then we have a USB C, which is. something like this. That's an oblong oval. And all the USB-Cs are version three, which means it's faster, all right? So, but one thing you have to remember, US, one USB and another USB that has the same name, like, USB type C, they are not necessarily the same. One can be faster than the other one, right? And when you buy them at Amazon or uh, um, any of the office stores, you really have to look at what speed they transmit at. Okay. So here are the reverse side of that connector. So you have type C here, and here's type C, and these two go together. So what these all, of, oh, by the way, there are a couple of other <clears throat> wireless uh, symbols. This symbol is wireless, Wi-Fi, meaning wireless fidelity, okay? That is how your most of your uh, laptops, your phone, and your tablet all connect to your home Wi-Fi. And if you come to the senior center, that is how your devices will connect to the senior center Wi-Fi, which will get you to the internet. This is called NFC, all right, and and uh, you don't see that too often. One place where you see it is cash, uh, grocery store cash registers, where you can take your credit card and tap that symbol. That symbol means behind it, there is a small piece of electronics that can talk to your credit card. And your credit card can send information to the uh, cash register. NFC stands for near field communication. It doesn't transmit very far, maybe only this far. Right. But you don't have to physically take your credit card, stick it into the machine. You just sort of tap it, and that's all you need. Phones can also use NFC. So if you want to use your phone to pay for grocery, you can take the back of your phone, tap your uh, cash register, wherever that's, wherever you see this symbol. And you just have to remember that you have to put your credit card into your phone first. HDMI, it stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. In the old days, there used to be, if you want to connect your VCR to your TV, you have like three different wires, all right? Uh, two wires for audio, one wire for video, or maybe two wires for video. Now everything is combined into a single connector. This 
HDMI cable can send video, it can send audio, and everything is inside of here. So when you're connecting multiple devices together, all you need is a single wire. Okay. I have also used a term called Bluetooth. This is the symbol that's used for Bluetooth. And you may be wondering where the word Bluetooth come from. And it's from Nordic. There used, there's a guy, let's see, what is it? Um, in Denmark, there is a king and the name of the king was Harold Bluetooth. And this is H, the letter H in Danish. And this is a Nordic B for, in this case, Bluetooth. So they took H for Harold, King Harold, and B for King Bluetooth, the same person now. So Harold Bluetooth became that symbol. All right. That's where the, the Bluetooth transmission signal was designed and they picked King Bluetooth as the symbol. So that's in case you're wondering, that's where Bluetooth came from. All right. When you <clears throat> want to listen to, let's say, very basic music, and <clears throat> you can, there are, here are some terms that people will use. Uh, if you read an article, uh, read instructions, you will hear these terms. One is playlist. Playlist says, okay, I like that song, I like this song, and I'm going to put together a sequence of songs, and I'm going to say, that is going to be my playlist for dinner hour. So it gets soothing music, whatever you like. Uh, you may have another list where you take 60s rock and roll and 60s something and merge it, all, put it all in some kind of sequence and you give that a playlist, give it a name. It says uh, rocking, driving down the road kind of music. Okay, whatever you want to call it. So playlist is a list that you create of the songs that you like. And you can save that list and you can play it back anytime you like. Right. I'm not this, I'm not talking about where the songs come from, just what are you going to call it? Um, <clears throat> another term that's favorite, right. not quite the same as playlist. Let's say you have uh, 500 songs on your phone. There are some, 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 some songs you love. Other songs, mm, you, not so much. So the ones that you like, you can put a little star next to it. And the software that's on your, in your phone will tend to play the songs that you like versus the songs that you don't like. Right. This way, if you have songs that you don't like, you don't have to delete it. You don't have to throw it away. You can keep it there, except the software in your phone or your laptop or your tablet just won't play it very often. Okay. Uh, another term you'll hear, oh, I think we're done with. Okay. Another term we use is streaming. Streaming means that I am retrieving something from the internet and I'm going to watch it right now or listen to it right now. It all happens at real time. And so I may want to watch a TV show 
And so I go to certain places and do a, and click on that show and that movie or that TV show gets sent to my device right now and I'm watching it right now. Another term is called download. It says, I don't want to watch it right now. I'm going to download it. I want to save it on my computer or my phone and I want to watch it later. So those are usually the major terms that people will use. So playlist is a list of songs that or I like. Favorite, meaning I like this one, that one, not, not so much. Uh, streaming, meaning send, I want the internet to send me the music or the video right now, I wanna watch it. Download means I wanna get it, save it, and watch it later. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about, now we talked about the, how do we connect it to connect our device to a device to a TV or stereo. Now let's talk about <clears throat> where we're going to get that media, how we, where we're going to get that music, where we're going to get that um, movie. Most radio station today, they have the normal radio station like we have been listening to for years, but they also take their music, send it onto the internet. Right. So like one of my, the station that I like is KNKX. I can get in my car, I can turn on KNKX station and I can listen to it. If I'm home, what I can do is I can actually go to, using my phone, go to knkx dot something. And that music, the same thing as that is being transmitted to the cars and portable radios, gets sent to my phone. So I can listen to the car when I'm in the car, or I can listen to my phone when I'm at home meaning the same station at the same time, meaning the music is being sent to my phone. And if you like uh, country western, there are tons of country western stations that you can find on the internet. And I would say majority of them are free. Okay. So all you have to do is find them. Um, <clears throat> so once the music gets on your phone, the, the speaker on the, on the, on your phone is kind of small, tiny. How do you listen to it on stereo? You can use one of these guys, connect it to your phone, you, meaning using a wire, or you can use one of these and put it on the back of the stereo and connect it, the phone to this device with no wires and the music will come out of your stereo. So <clears throat> um, it's, um, I would say if, like, if you listen, if you like listening to NPR, you can look for npr.org on the internet. And once you find it, you can click on it and you'll usually find on their screen somewhere it says start streaming or start listening. And the music will come out of your phone or come out of, through one of these. Okay, <clears throat> how about how about, uh, let's say, uh, channels, King 5, Como. You can go to, use your phone, type in king5.com, and you'll go to their website. 
if you happen to have one of these connected, you don't use wires, I mean, you don't use wireless, you use this, then followed by one of these, and the other end of this is connected to the TV, you are now watching King 5. And you can pretty much watch a lot of the stuff from any of the commercial TV, except uh, you usually only get news. For others, uh, they don't make it easy. And sometimes they will prefer that you pay. So it depends on what company you're trying, you're connected to. You may or may not be able to watch live TV the way you normally see it. And just also remember that if you do have a TV, and if you, if you do live, let's say, on Bainbridge, you should be able to get a, do you, do you remember the old rabbit ears? Well, the new rabbit ears are not rabbit ears. The new rabbit ear is a rectangular sheet like a piece of paper except thicker and you put that on your window or on your wall and then you connect that antenna to your TV and aha there it is and it, it's inexpensive and so no matter where you are at home if you're at home you have one of these things and a flat antenna and you can watch any of the channels that you can get and by the way you can get more than three channels on these flat tvs um there is a place you can go i don't remember the name of it but you can look at all the channels from where you are you are able to watch for free all right so i was i think the last time I looked, it, there were somewhere around 15, 20 channels you can watch without having to pay any fees. Okay. But it really depends on where you live on Bainbridge. Uh, if you have a good reception to a local antenna. And you most of the Bainbridge Island has fairly good reception to Seattle's antennas. All right. <clears throat> Um, I I found a screen. Do you want me to see if this is yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. So this might be it. Um, let's see. Share screen. It's called Channel Master. That's it. <clears throat> you put in your zip code, or you can even put in your address, and then you can. Uh, it will tell you what the channels are and what the power, what you know, how strong the signal is from where you are. I use one of those uh, square um, uh, antennas, and I find that I ha sometimes have to, just like the old ones, I have to move it if I want to get channel nine, or if I'm trying to get the Seahawks game, I better change, move it around a little bit more because seven's not going to come in or four is not, not going to come in the same. And they are not very expensive. And uh, they are great without having to uh, sign up for cable or satellite TV or anything else. And that is totally free, totally free of charge. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, oh, <clears throat> obviously there are other ways you can uh, listen to listen to uh, music. That is good old headphones, and which I totally forgot to talk about, and. Most of the phones these days 
no longer have a speaker connector, a headphone connector. So you essentially will have to get wireless headphones. But <clears throat> uh, let's see, I don't think I brought it. Um, there is a device that is, you connect to your phone, and this, this end here is a headphone connector. So you can go someplace and get a $5 set of headphones or $10. You probably don't want to go too cheap. And connect it to your hearing aid, to your ear. The other end goes into a little connector and you can listen to music. And you can connect it to your Mac your computer, your laptop, your tablet. Okay. <clears throat> Bluetooth is probably the most efficient way to listen to music <clears throat> and watch TV. And But there are some downside to using Bluetooth. A Bluetooth is for short distance, in other words, don't expect Bluetooth to go 100 feet. All right. So you probably want to be in the same room as the TV set or with whatever the, let's say, one of these speakers. Bluetooth is designed for short distance and it's very efficient and you can on your phone, <clears throat> you'll find that there is a symbol, Bluetooth symbol. And if you click on that Bluetooth symbol, it was, and ask it to tell you what Bluetooth speakers are around in your vicinity. And you will probably find this showing up as one of them. And if that's the one you want, you tap it and the music will come out here. Or I'm sure that you have uh, seen a lot of people walking around with these white little things hanging out of your ear. And those are headphones. And that device also has a name. So, you can turn on that Bluetooth symbol and ask it to search what Bluetooth devices there are around you and your headphone that's in your ear will show up as one of them. By the way, I wear hearing aid. And guess how I answer phone calls? Phone call comes into here and it goes from here through Bluetooth into my ear. Right. So I can, I can be uh, in, a, in a noisy grocery store and I get a phone call and I can hear everything through Bluetooth. Just remember, Bluetooth is for short distance. Downside with Bluetooth is if you want to watch a movie, or actions, or photos, depending on the picture and how much movement there are. Let's say if you just want to look at a plain standard picture, photograph, nothing is moving on that screen. So the picture will come out clear. But if you're watching a movie with, uh, uh, let's say, a lot of action, let's say horses running, what you will end up seeing is the picture of the horse, it will sort of get jittery. It's not nice and smooth or a person running. Most likely if the person is walking or a horse is walking, if you use Bluetooth, the picture will be just fine. But the second they start moving fast, Bluetooth quite often cannot catch up. Right. So in those cases, the best option is a wire. 
Uh, wire is going to be faster, but there is also the distance you're looking at. You can't go 50 feet with a wire and still expect all the signals to stay intact. So if you want to connect uh, <clears throat> a phone, and by the way, when I come to Senior Center, there is a big TV on the wall. I can, if that TV is, has been set to say, I'm going to allow other people to connect to the phone, I can pick on my phone and I can say Bluetooth and I can actually connect to that TV and my picture will show up on that TV. Now, the downside with a TV in a public place is everybody may want to connect to it. So you have to manage that or uh, <clears throat> you have to have some kind of organization and you're just going to say, all right, the TV is going to be used for uh, some official purpose. But if you're a home, go into your TV's home settings you will see something for Bluetooth, or if you are in Apple environment, you may see something called AirDrop. Right. And so <clears throat> if I'm on the phone, Okay, for the Bluetooth, you'll find that I have a whole bunch of devices that I connect to at home. And one is a, a keyboard, that's Bluetooth. Uh, the car, so my, when I get in my car, my phone connects to my car. So if I get a phone call, the phone call actually comes out of my car's speaker. Uh, another keyboard and my hearing aid. No, this is, I got two hearing aids, but I only have one pair. Um, on the very bottom, you'll see Soundcore Ace. By the way, Soundcore is this guy. All right. It says, it knows about it, I'm not connected to it. All I have to do is tap on it. I will connect to it. Okay. <clears throat> um, so if on your Mac, if you look at or your, your uh, uh, Apple devices, if you look through the settings, you'll find something that says AirDrop. Go into AirDrop and say, I want to be able to connect to things. But first, you have, what you have to do is go to that thing, whether it be a TV or a set of speaker, you have to go to that device and to like the TV, and you want to say, I want to allow anybody to connect to you, to the uh, TV. So <clears throat> at home, uh, Whenever I see uh, something on my phone or on my Mac and I want my wife to look at it, instead of having her come behind me, stand behind me to look at my screen, I would just send it to our TV. And our TV currently is off and I can tap it and the TV will come on and it will say AirPlay and whatever is on my screen shows up on that TV. All right. Now, let's say you have a TV, uh, older uh, flat screen TV that doesn't have AirPlay or AirDrop. And which is, by the way, is true for me. We don't have a new enough flat screen. Our flat screen is quite old. 
but we also decided to get movies using a $25 item. And that's Roku. What is it? R-O-K-U. And it is a streaming device. It's a little stick. You plug it into the side of the TV. That little stick is able to talk to a phone. So I turn on my phone and I say, I want to use AirPlay and Roku wakes up, Roku wakes up my TV. And so all of a sudden, whatever I have on my phone shows up on the TV. So from what I've said so far, it gets, it gets, there are a whole slew of ways to connect your phone, your pad, your uh, laptop to, there is a Roku. And you'll find that some of them, I know the box is big, but the actual device is tiny. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, very convenient. You can use this device. Let's say you have a TV that is relatively old in terms of the height, the, the new flat screen wise. We bought our flat screen right after it came out and I have not upgraded it because I didn't think I needed to. People keep on saying, oh, you need to buy a new smart TV. And I say, no, I don't. I just went out and bought a Roku $25 stick plug it into the TV. Now my TV is a smart TV. So $25 is a heck of a lot cheaper than going out and buy, pay three, $500 for a brand new TV. And also what am I gonna do with the old one? So this way I can keep using the old TV, buy a $25 device. And by the, by the way, Roku is not the only brand. Amazon has their own brand and I think there are a couple of others. There's about three or four brands out there that you can, you can get that are essentially a smart, they call it this uh, smart TV stick. Okay. <clears throat> um, Most of you, if you have an iPhone, um, there is a special word you can say to your phone. Right? And it's a name and it's called a wake word right? to wake it up. Just remember, if you ever say, say that word, your phone is gonna to try to answer it. So I'm not saying it, right? <clears throat> and okay, I'll say it. It's Siri. So it's a wake word, and I can say, "Hey Siri," and mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard it or not, but my Mac just woke up and says, "Uh huh." What do you want? Uh, if you have an Android device, um, for example. Apple uses a wake word called Hey Siri. Google uses a wake word called Hey Google. And Amazon's Echo devices uses Hey Alexa. All right. These are all wake words. I have a problem with Amazon's word. Alexa is actually a human person's name. So if you have the Alexa device, no, not Alexa, yeah, Amazon device at home, different people are gonna use that wake word to wake up that little puck. Right. So you can say, hey, Alexa, what is the name of the song that's playing? By the way, the way I said it, you can say that to your Apple device, 
You can say that to your Google device or your Amazon device. If you're in the room and there is a smart device sitting in the room close to you, you can say, hey, whatever, what song is playing? And that wakes that device up. You will listen to the song. You will interpret what that song is, and it will give you the answer. You can even say things like, hey, Alexa, play NPR. It will connect to the NPR internet, and the music or talk will actually come out on your phone or on that little speaker. All right. And this is not it's not smart enough to have any kind of uh, communication with it. All this is good for is have my phone talk to it, but you can get a Amazon Echo. I have no idea how much they cost. They are not that expensive, but it really depends on what you use at home, whether you are uh, Amazon household or Google household or Apple household. And so, <clears throat> um, I think I covered uh, going, sending pictures or movies to a TV or to a wall projector. What I didn't cover is sending a picture to a printer. And that is kind of a challenge because the printer will have to be able to support a certain protocol or a certain way of understanding what your phone is sending it. So if you do have a printer and that printer has a capability called air print, not all printer has that. More and more printers are now starting to support it, but not every. So if you do have one and you can get on your phone and you pick a picture and you can say, send it to the printer using AirPrint. So it really depends on the vintage or the model of the printer you have. And I've looked at the printers on, uh, um, I, I'm not quoting Amazon because Amazon has new stuff and old stuff. And let's say I go to Best Buy or uh, Costco, look at their printers. Many of them will have the word air print on it. It means that you can send your pictures directly from your phone to that printer. So, okay, we are... Our time is up.